It's been six weeks since I began this bathroom remodel and with a couple of hours a day, building a vanity from scratch, making design choices and collecting samples, I'm content with how far I've been able to get. What was once a builder grade bathroom is finally starting to look like the custom bathroom of my dreams. Here's a small recap of where I started and how far I've come. Typically when I have built cabinets in the past, I've never added face rooms because it is more expensive and to save on costs, I've opted to skip out on it. This time I did not want to skip it because I wanted my doors to be inset and to really give that high end look. So after I measured, I made all of my cuts out of one by twos. I created pocket holes on all of my cross pieces to be able to attach them together. Once I put together the face frame for the upper storage cabinet, I went ahead and added the edge banding to the two adjustable shelves I cut out last week. And using shelf pins, I added them in. There's three separate face frames that I needed to build, so I built the bottom hamper cabinet face frame using the same method and attached it as well. You'll see that this face frame has legs and that I've added some decorative pieces to not have a plain straight across toe kick. I'll explain that process in a minute. I decided I would add a total of four drawers in a center space. I've got a short video explaining on how you can figure out the spacing to create your drawers. I'll link it in the description. I built the space frame to include the side cabinet spaces as well. And you may have noticed that I also added what will be faux drawers to match the top drawer in the middle section. I wanted it to be as cohesive as possible and really make the main vanity stand out from the laundry chute. We live in an advanced tech world where anything you want to research can be easily accessible via the internet. Sometimes it's beneficial and sometimes it's not. I personally find it to be true because a little less than a year and a half ago, I didn't know how to remodel anything or build anything. And thanks to the internet and through trial and error, I was able to learn and continue to build on my skills. But did you know that that's not the only thing that you can find on the internet? 
which is why I wanted to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Aura. Did you know that you can also find personal information about yourself and others. This information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, spammers, telemarketers, and anyone else who wants to learn more about you. Well, Aura helps identify data brokers that are exposing your information and automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. They'll even opt out on junk mail and telemarketing lists. Aura's app includes almost every internet safety tool you'll need, including a VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, internet parental controls, and even protects your devices from malware. If you sign up using my link, Aura will give you a two-week free trial. You'll be shocked to see how much of your private information Aura finds exposed over the next two weeks. Don't become one in every 15 people who will become victims of identity fraud. Instead, go to oral.com slash Glenda, use the link down in the description or scan the QR code and start your free trial today. Now back to the video. Okay, so I'm done building the face frame. I'm gonna go ahead and attach it. I am gonna put a little bit of glue, not too much. So just move this. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is secure these two face frames together. To create the decorative toe kick, I first had to make sure that when I built the face frame that I left a big enough spacing to be able to add these extra pieces. And to create these extra pieces, all I did was take some scrap 3 quarter inch plywood and rip it down to 4 inch pieces. I moved over to my miter saw and moved my bevel to a 45 degree angle and cut off one end and then turned the piece around to cut another 45 degree angle on the other end the same way. The length of the total piece would just depend on how narrow or wide you would want it. Once all my pieces were cut, I simply glued and brad nailed them into place. Next, it was time to start tackling the building of the doors. This is probably the most amount of doors I've ever built at one time, so I had a lot of force to cut to size. Once all the boards were cut to size for my rails and styles, I began running them through my table saw using a dado blade to create the grooves. Try to forget about you makes me restless. Waiting for love, waiting for love. I don't know what else I can do, it's hopeless to be holding on to you. Hopeless. Once I had ran all the boards through, I wanted to organize and label all of them so then I could go and label which ones I needed to create the tongues on.
Once I had all of that sorted out, it was back to the table saw to create those tongues on those specific boards. Okay, so now that I'm ready to start putting this together, I'm gonna come back to my drawings and figure out which two sets belong together. So for this one, I need the ones that were 42 and 3 eighths, which is my longest pieces. There's no other ones that are that long. And then my eight and 1 16th pieces. So I'll come over here to my little setup and look for the eight and 1 16ths. Perfect, grab those grab my long pieces and that's what I need to create these doors. Before I began assembling my doors, I wanted to trim out the top to the storage cabinet. I used a one by four cut to size, making sure to miter the corners where the two pieces met. I began assembling my doors, but it will be something that I will finish off next week in the meantime, let's talk about how much we've spent so far and the additional purchases that I made this week. Last week, my total was at $1,494.36, but since then I bought the 1x3s and 1x4s of red oak for the doors and the top trim for $258.24. I bought stain samples that I was able to add to some scrap boards, which I shared with you over on Instagram after I narrowed it down to three samples and that totaled out to $41.46. I had to buy one by twos to create the face frames and that was $67.89. I went ahead and bought the faucets, even though I won't be installing them until the following week, which were $88.74. The biggest expense this week was the tile for the accent wall that was $502.07. I ordered the light fixture that I plan on setting up vertically for $58.44. Wipe on poly that I needed to use to seal the vanity once I stain it for $22.43. Bringing our new total to $2,533.63. It looks like I have most of my materials for my vanity already, with the exception of the hardware and also the drawer slides and the hinges for the doors. After that, it will be complete and I won't need to spend another penny on that. Things should be starting to pick up and going a lot quicker from here. And I hope that you will stick around to see this project to the end. Thank you for showing your support. I love y'all, be kind, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye.